having a consistent approach every time is the most important thing to have on the MCAT because frankly, you don't know if this passage is going to be scored or not. George, welcome back to the MCAT podcast. How you doing? <laughs> good, good, good to be back. Good Ra to see you again. Raising the roof for everyone just listening. If you're just listening to this in podcast form, we also record the video, uh, which is more important when we're going over questions and figures and stuff. So mm. you can always always go watch on YouTube at premed.tv. That is where you can find the YouTube videos for the MCAT podcast. Um, George, we're going to be talking about a sneaky thing that the AMC does that isn't really sneaky, but I don't think a lot of students really understand or really um, appreciate the fact that there are passages in their MCAT, the, the, mm -hmm. the MCAT that they're taking, that aren't going to be scored because the AMC is basically saying, hey, guinea pigs, thanks for taking <laughs> these extra questions that we're testing out. And I, I understand why the AMC does that, but I also think it's a little sketchy because it, it potentially adds a lot of stress to the student's plate yeah. of like, yeah. hey, I'm paying to sit here and you're making my test longer, number one, and you're also potentially throwing a passage at me that I've never seen before. Maybe the structure's a little bit different. Maybe the topic's a little bit different. Maybe how you're asking the question is a little bit different because you're testing these things out. And that one experimental passage may throw off the rest of my day. Mm, mm. So let's talk about experimental passages. <laughs> <laughs> sure, uh, sure. What are they? Right, so with these experimental passages, it's like they're by design meant to trip you up a little bit. And so it's it's something that we should remember in life in our prep as well. We're going to see things that we aren't familiar with. We're going to see things that are literally meant to trip us up. But you think in medicine, yes, you learn in med school, you learn the diseases, you learn the patterns. Breaking news, you're gonna see in actual rotations, clerkship, when you're a physician one day, you're gonna see things that don't match the textbook description. No, patients always don't. follow the textbook. <laughs> right, Come on. Right? You're going to see things that are atypical and atypical in a lot of ways is actually going to be your typical when you look at complex cases, when you look multiple comorbidities together. It's not just one condition. It's like 10 conditions layered on top of each other, each other. And you're trying to like work your way back and reverse synthesize your way to try and identify what's actually going on. So with any kind of passage on the MCAT, whether it's an intentional passage that you're being tested on or an experimental passage, as in this case, Always look for the things that you are familiar with. Always look for the things that you you know you can um, look for and identify that you've you've refined through your own approach, right? Having a consistent approach every time is the most important thing to have on the MCAT because frankly, you don't know if this passage is going to be scored or not. You will know if it stresses you out, but this is something <laughs> we can always reflect on in our own kind of test taking as in, why did I get tripped up by this passage? Was it because there were big fancy words and big ugly acronyms and alphabet soup and genes all over it? Was it because the figures were big and ugly and mean and like they had these plus minuses and they had this blot and they had this graph and like these bars and I was just, I was overwhelmed, right? So having an approach every time, no matter if it's an easy passage, a difficult passage or an experimental passage is what's gonna get you through on test day. It's what's going to give you an opportunity to lean back on your, your plan no matter what. You're not going to get overwhelmed because you have a step-by-step -step approach. You have an algorithm that you're going to follow. Mm -hmm. That is what's going to keep you composed. That is what's going to help you succeed in both those low-stress and high-stress situations. Yeah. So let's be clear here. As the student is taking the test, it's not like the AAMC says, hey, welcome to <laughs> question 40 in, mm -hmm. in your bio biochem. Hey, by the way, this is an experimental passage mm -hmm. that won't be scored. The student mm -hmm. isn't going to know that, correct? No, absolutely not. There's all the questions look the same. Mm -hmm. You're going to get passages. Some passages might feel easy. Some passages might feel harder, but you never quite know which one is which. Yeah. So as a student is going through this test, they shouldn't try to, I'm assuming, figure out, oh, this is an experimental passage. Therefore, I'm just going to mark C for everyone and move on. No, definitely not. And I've heard... <laughs> Even from a school of thought, I've heard some students say like, oh, sometimes like skip your first passage because the first passage is meant to trip you up and like start on the second one. It's like, it's not that clear cut, right? Yeah. The MCAT's not designed that way. Yes, the MCAT is designed to stress you out a little bit and it ultimately tests your thinking ability, yeah. not just your science and content knowledge, but your thinking ability. How do you make decisions under pressure? And so having that approach of, 
not even worrying about, is this an easier, tough passage? Is this anything? Don't ask yourself the questions. Just approach the, the, the passages with the same approach every time. What are some of the key takeaways? What are some of the key words? What kind of passage? How is it structured? Is this like a lab manual? I'm getting some values. Is this an experimental passage? I go background, uh, intro, and then like methods, uh, hypothesis, all that kind of stuff, results, like the classic things that you're looking for. Look for those same things every time and then give your best shot to the questions. If you start to stress yourself out with, is this an easy passage? Is this a hard passage? Is this an experimental passage that they're probably not going to mark? You don't know that. They might actually score that, that passage, even if it seems hard. And then it's like, well, the test taker who took it seriously versus the test taker who's like, ah, I'm going to skip this because I think it was an experimental passage. It's not a decision worth making. Approach it the same time every time and you'll be rewarded in the end for your thinking skills and your ability to stay calm. Yeah. Why why does the WMC do this? I mean, well, <laughs> if, only we knew, if only we knew, right? So the I think it really comes down to this idea of being able to stay calm under pressure and in times of stress. I think that's a really useful skill for both medicine and in life in general, because like we've talked about before, the MCAT really isn't about just content retention in the sense that even for exams that are scored, I promise, I promise, I promise you, you will see things on test day that you have not seen before. New diseases, new conditions, new drugs, new medications, new proteins, new pathways. You weren't supposed to memorize those things, but you are supposed to think about it in a similar way that you've thought about questions before. What are the relationships? Do things increase, decrease? Does something activate, inhibit? Does something in some way like lead to a cascade? Does this protein represent a receptor? Does this protein represent an enzyme? Is this a structural protein? There are things that you will see time and time again that you have seen in your test prep. The MCAT likes to test the same things. So with that in mind, it's not so much about like, okay, well, um, the AMC is trying to test me and now I feel bad and I'm stressed out. Why would they do that to me? It's like, this is just another passage that they're going to test my ability to stay calm, my ability to make my decisions, my ability to triage. Because sometimes there will be questions where you really don't know the answer. And it's not worth spending five minutes re-looking at it, thinking about it more, wasting that time when you have potentially five easy points from easy questions down the line. That is a case of triaging that you're going to have to do in medicine as well, where it's like sometimes you have to make that difficult decision of cutting the one loss so you can benefit five benefit from five other questions, right? So it really is a decision-making skill. And I think that might be one reason why the AMC throws it in. But of course, I, I can't really speak for the AMC, but that, that would be my best guess. Yeah. Yeah. And they're they're constantly trying to iterate and make make new passages, make new questions, try new things. Mm. Um, and so they're, they're constantly testing that stuff. Again, I, I don't know if testing students on their actual test day um, with these experimental passages that the students are paying for uh, mm. to take the test is the right way to do it. But um, it's it's obviously the probably the gold standard to, mm. sit, to, to have these new passages, these new questions tested in a real environment that the student isn't aware of, right? It's, it's kind of right. a a single blind um, controlled study, right? The, the AAMC yeah. knows which ones are the placebos. Uh, the mm. student does not. Do you know if they use those questions again in other exams? Because like if they're testing it, what would the purpose be of, of yeah. testing it? Like would they, they, they're they they're using them in the, for the future, I'm pretty sure. Future exams, yeah. I see, I see. So if it's like a good question, it follows the curve that they're looking for, they'll use it in another exam. You got it. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, it's stressful for the student. And so- Of course, yeah. yeah. I, I, I want to go back to the thing of the this strategy, right? This little hack of like, oh, just skip the first passage. And then what happens if you get to the second passage? You're like, oh my gosh, I don't know anything about this, right? There's, there's well, always it. some sort of mind, bad word, right? Mind mess yeah. of, of like, I, I hate those kind of games. Like just, just yeah. take the test. There is no absolute. That's the way yeah. I like to think of it. And I, this reminds me of a time, actually, this was an undergrad at a biochem exam. And I think it was solving for some value where it was a multi-part question. It was like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? And I think in part A, I don't remember what the formula was, but the answer that I got was negative. And the value for that variable should never be negative. And so the rest of the question, the B, C, D, E, F, it's like, you use that value and continue your calculation. So this was on maybe the second page of our exam. And I remember looking at it and I was like, this value shouldn't be negative. So I calculated the number again. Like I, I redid my equation in you know a couple minutes and I was like, you know what, this doesn't make sense. So 
I just skipped the question. I went to the rest of the exam and continued doing the exam. I did the other questions. And I was like, if I have time, I'll come back to it because something's not quite making sense there. And then turns out 15 minutes later, the prof makes an announcement. He's like, hey, on that second page, don't worry about that question. There's something wrong with it. Like, And you can just feel the energy in the room of like angry students being like, why didn't you tell me this earlier? Like I spent so long on this. I've been doing this question. You're gonna tell me right now that it doesn't make sense. And it's like, I get that you're frustrated because was it fair that these tough questions are there? No, like it was, it was a bad question to begin with, but ultimately it's like the sad reality is it is what it is. It's what, what kind of decision do you make from it? Right. You could say, well, it doesn't really make sense. And okay, let me try the other questions. I'll come back to it. And it's the same thing with difficult questions. There'll be questions that maybe it's on the tip of your tongue, but you're like, I'll give it some time and I'll come back to it to say that the, the first passage is the most difficult. I'm going to skip it every time is an absolute. Cause maybe the first passage is an easy one. Maybe the second passage is the toughest one. You never know. So approach it with the same mindset. Every time do your best. If you find that it's like, Hey, I don't really know what to do with this question move on. If you're like, I need more time for this question. I know I could do it, but I'm starting to spend too much time. I'm at that one minute, two minute mark, flag it, come back to it later. Don't spend the full 10 minutes to really make sure that you get the one question. Cause you're going to lose that time on other questions. There's valuable points on other questions as well. Yeah. So uh, I, I guess at the end of the day for these experimental passages, really the, hmm. the core message is they exist. You yes. don't know which ones they are. Don't yes. try to gamify your test day of going, ooh, this one is experimental, this one isn't. Absolutely. Um, and you're never going to know at the end of the day, right? Your score doesn't come back and, and say, oh, this is the score you got on all of the non-experimental passages. This is the score you got on your experimental passages. So it's one of those, again, it's just, it's kind of a, a messing with your mind of like, you know they're there and there's nothing you can do about it. So just mm. treat it like a regular old passage because you don't have any other choice. That's that's basically it, right? It's like, it's a sad case of it is what it is, but what else are we gonna do? We're gonna write an angry letter to the AMC and be like, don't make me your guinea pig? I, <laughs> I don't think that'd be well received. I don't think they're gonna change anything. So. I, I, I decline to participate in your study. I did not see an IRB for this. <laughs> yeah. They're like, all right, well, that's your call. Like, yeah. good luck. You know? so, good luck. You are not allowed to yeah. sit for the MCAT now. Right. Treat it like every other exam. That's really, I think, the best advice we can give.